What is going on guys welcome back to another video I have bring an amazing day to this video we are going to taking a look at something different which would be the Android one port for the Redmi Note 9s or the Redmi Note 9 Pro Cortana so again over here this is a complete DSP from MI to Jasmine and it just works amazing like the performance over here is so great and then again it has all the Xiaomi framework and services so if you have trouble with like latest Mi bands which are giving issues on the custom ROMs you can definitely come to this as it being a complete Xiaomi firmware and stock Android so again let's just talk about the performance it's stock android but still the app opening speeds and everything are so fast like look at that have you ever seen google apps that fast like just look at that even the g cam right over here opens in a blink so let me just whip out my galaxy note 20 ultra <laughs> and if you just take a look at right over here they are both actually the same height note 9 pro is a massive phone at least the note 20 ultra is a bit slimmer than it but as you can see big cameras again the note 20 ultra's camera model is obnoxiously big but this matte finish does actually help um, compared to this dirtiness but if you just compare some of the daily apps that you use for example play store pretty much same then again chrome hmm note 9 pro was faster then again camera okay note 9 pro was faster again with the play store i guess with the web apps it's just not predictable like the performance oh here is on par at least for the daily apps from google but in terms of another things too it's just great again you get a lot of bloatware right over here as being a google certified device but if you think about it this is a complete mi a4 yeah there is no business existing of note 9 pro max cause basically the mi a series was a stock android version of a bit improved redmi and that's what Note 9 Pro Max is it's a bit improved version of the Note 9 Pro with higher charging capacity and higher resolution camera they could easily fit in extra year of android updates with it and just call it MI for like that would be such a great move instead of having like four different 720g devices which would be the Note 9 Pro Note 9 Pro Max Poco M2 Pro or the Redmi Note 9 Pro Global but again over here you have the Google AR core and stuff but if you just talk about the bugs there are only two or three bugs that could actually avoid you from using this as a daily driver else everything has been fixed like even the cutout over there just works nice apps do not scale beyond that but if you just go to the brightness slider uh, yeah it's kind of wonky again the brightness just completely works but the brightness slider isn't optimized at all okay that seems fine again the cts o here is broken so some of the banking apps could cause issues then again the camera support isn't great so again this is a mi to camera app it doesn't have any kind of wide angle features or something again it just works great in terms of all the features like there is no portrait mode over here which again just crashes on bunch of the phones if you port it but if you just go to the g cam I would leave a preferred Gcam with a config in the description so you are sorted out with it but again over here the depth camera just works fine even the wide angle lens but the macro camera is just completely broken again the ANX camera isn't supported right over here so you can't use that too and if you just go to the video the other lenses just won't work if you just switch to them the camera would completely crash so yeah the camera functions are bit limited and that's basically it if you just hop on to the settings app you have about phone section right over there which is just with the normal android one phones then again going down you have battery everything like normal phones when if you go to the display you have dark theme which is gray not black looks quite fine to be honest if you scroll down you have lock screen display which also has always on display which is bit weird that mi2 has a lcd with mi3 it was a oled display but works great again it has a very beautiful animation like a crt effect which is in android but not a lot of oems have it enabled like look at that If you are watching in 60 fps, you can really feel the parallax effect right over there. You can just directly unlock the phone right over there, and even with notifications, it's way fluid. So coming back, nothing right over here. Even with sound storage, privacy, there is just nothing. It's a stock Android phone. So in terms of biometrics, you do get fingerprint scanner completely working fine over here. Even with the Google Play security updates, that just loaded up. So there is no face unlock as it's been removed in Android 10. from non google oems cause the pixel 4 had a complete scanner for it but it would take time for the developers to adapt on the note 9 pro so in terms of fingerprint it's extremely fast so if you just completely scan this finger i guess the note 9 pro obnoxiously takes a lot of scans to be honest like a normal phone should be done by over here but this phone takes like a 20 to 30 scans to be honest just look at that it's still going There you go. Let's just test it out. Tap. 
there you go extremely fast even if i just tap a bit bottom there you go extremely accurate but the fp gestures don't work for example swipe down for notification that's just completely broken you have mi services right over here even the digital well-being to just track all of your data in terms of notification unlocks app usage and in settings you don't have a lot of stuff you just have your normal gestures with jump to camera system navigation completely working fine even with the google assistant at the bottom there you go and yeah that's pretty much it for the android one port for your note 9 pro that's basically it normal plain android experience and then how to install it well the installation is very simple you have to just download the zip in the description extract it on your pc and just run windows bat if you have a windows pc which of course everyone does let the rom boot up install the gcam in the description open it set it up go to settings scroll down configs and just save a random config that would create the folder for it and then just copy the config from your file manager to the gcam's config folder come back to the gcam double tap in this space and just restore the config that should completely fix the camera as it is and yeah that's pretty much it see you guys in the next one peace